double negation, rule of replacement. P is logically equivalent to not not P. As logical equivalence, P entails not not P and not not T not not P entails P. You can go both directions with this rule since these things have the exact same truth values. Let's see how it works with some simple inputs. We can put in A, we get A is logically equivalent to not not A. Every once in a while you might start out with a negation. Well, not A is logically equivalent to not 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 A. Thankfully, that one's relatively rare. This rule lets you add or subtract exactly two negations. If you want to, you can use this rule on extremely long phrases. Here, you can put in A and not B for P and come away with not not A or not B. You can put in a long phrase like it's not the case that if A then either not B or C. And that would be logically equivalent to it's not, not, not the case that if A, then either not B or C. No matter what you input, no matter how long or complicated, you may add or subtract exactly two negations with double negation. A phrase like A or B as our input can help us see several different ways you can add or subtract not not. In fact, all four of these phrases, A and B, it's not not the case that A and B, not not A and B, and finally, A and not not B are all logical equivalents. Because you can apply this to a whole line, as here, to a partial line on just one sentence letter or any other part of a partial line, and it's okay. Since A is logically equivalent to not not A, B is logically equivalent to not not B, and not not A and B is logically equivalent to A and B, it is always going to have the same truth value, whether you've got two or zero negations on any value. With this rule, we're not dealing with a main operator every time, though it might be. You are simply adding or subtracting two negation signs. As a rule of replacement, this applies in both directions to any whole line or partial line. We cite exactly one line and we result in a line with exactly two more or fewer negations. Here's a little English example. I like pizza. I don't not like pizza. We might lose a little of the subtlety when we say that these things are logical equivalents, but they do have the same truth value. Notice we've got don't and not, two negations. We could also say it's not the case that I don't like pizza, but that's really a sentence you only use in logic class. With the truth table, we can see that not not p negates not p, as their truth values are opposite, and we can see that p and not not p are indeed logically equivalent because they're always true or false under the same conditions. Let's see how to correctly use this in a few different kinds of proofs. As a very versatile rule, it can be used in a lot of different ways. So here we have P, if Q then not P, therefore not Q. Our first step should be to double negate P, since we want to use a modus tollens. We add or subtract two negations. This time we'll add. And then we can do modus tollens. That's a pretty simple version. Recall that modus tollens requires you to negate the consequent of your conditional. If that consequent is already negated, you're going to need two negation signs in front of another sentence letter. This is a classic case of needing double negation. How about this? Either not P or not Q. If not R, then P. And it's not the case that either not P or not Q, or not R. Therefore, not Q. That's a mess. And yes, we're going to use a few double negations. So let's take a quick look. First, we can double negate the entire first line. That will allow us to do a disjunctive syllogism on lines three and four, as we have negated one half of that 
that gets rid of a lot of, rid of, a lot of the mess and allows us to do a modus ponens. But we'll need another double negation if we're going to do a disjunctive syllogism. And finally, we've gotten to the end with not Q. Here's one more example where we'll get to see a couple of ways of using double negation in partial lines. So the first thing we'll do is double negate line two and get rid of those not not in front of R. That way, this will match our conclusion and set us up for a bonus ponens to finish this off. Then we can do the exact same thing and double negate Q in line one. But if we wanted to, we could also add two negations to line three. That would be just as good. So let's stick with that so we can see two different things. First we subtracted, then we added. Once again, note that it doesn't have to apply to a whole line to be logically equivalent. Now that our antecedent matches line four, we can do modus ponens. And that leaves us with R. There's a couple of common errors with double negation. The first is skipping this rule. The second is forgetting to add two negations and adding just one. So we might skip this rule, especially with modus tollens and disjunctive syllogism, and go straight from P and if Q then not P to not Q, or from P and either not P or Q to Q. Why are these wrong, since they are logically entailed? Well, logic is about exactness. Modus tollens and, mod and disjunctive syllogism require a negated line to work. That's the rules of our game. Following those rules is important, in computer language, since code can't intuit any missing step, no matter how obvious it is to you and me, and in situations of lack of trust, like when you're writing up a legal document. Single negation is an even worse error, because it's, you know, logically wrong. Here we go from P, and either P or Q, to not P, trying to get not Q. That won't work. Obviously, P is not logically equivalent to not P. So why do I see this mistake so often on quizzes and exams? Well, I think people are working quickly. This is kind of the equivalent of a typo, and sometimes I think it's used as a wild guess. Maybe people are hoping I won't catch it, but believe me, I always do. When you're using double negation, you have to add two negatives. Adding one is not logically equivalent. It's taking the opposite. 